what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're gonna be talking about i know what you did last summer in this video here again today so we have more cast members rounding out the cast of the film that's supposed to be a sequel to i know and i still know what you did last summer that reportedly is already filming according to l magazine we got another confirmation on gabriette from this casting report that came from deadline today it says lola tongue nicholas alexander chavez austin nichols and gabriette have rounded out the cast of sony pictures highly anticipated sequel i know what you did last summer they joined previously announced cast members chase wonders madeline klein sarah pigeon tyreek withers jonah har king with freddie prince jr set to reprise his role and the original film star jennifer love hewitt is still in talks to return now we also have the report about billy campbell too don't want to leave him out jennifer kate and robinson is directing the follow-up to the horror film franchise which is written by sam lansky and kate and robinson off a draft by leah mckendrick it says here the film of course is coming out july 18 2025 it goes on to mention what shows some of these people are from because I don't really understand how so many of you keep up with them. I saw my quote tweets and I was like, how the hell do you guys know who these people are? Some of you were already not wanting it to happen anymore because of one guy. And then I looked up this article to see that he is from the Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Mendez story series that Ryan Murphy just did. So I'm like, oh, that makes sense because I know that that show got a lot of flack. But my thoughts on all of this are while this is a hot cast i can't take that away from them i, I just I, i'm struggling so much to see still where our legacy cast is necessary something about scream and halloween when they were coming back it felt easy to understand it this i can't i get that they're formatting it and it's, it's inspired by what scream 2022 did but just because scream 2022 did it doesn't mean you can do it and it'll be effective it doesn't mean that you actually should do it anyway i don't know man something about this just doesn't feel right because one of these people has to be playing these rumored characters one person has to be ava one person has to be milo some pair of them have to be getting married there has to be wyatt because i've talked about a wyatt character who's in the crypto uh somebody has to be paint be playing kyle hannah pastor noah all these people i've talked about who seem like they are very crucial to the main meat and potatoes of the story of what is going on and transpiring when it comes to whatever this group of friends gets into on what again is possibly going to occur on the night of an alleged engagement party, none of which has been confirmed. But so far, that's a lot of people. And this cast keeps growing. These, of course, are obviously people who have already been signed because, again, when we get these reports, it doesn't mean that these people just signed. They've been signed and we're just now getting the public knowledge of it all. Where do the legacy stars come in? And speaking of Leah McKendrick, Leah McKendrick, at one point or another, when asked about Brandy, replied to someone on social media with the shh emoji. But then Brandy came out and says she didn't even know about the project. Then there were reports about the fact that Brandy and Jennifer, the director, are supposed to be meeting. And it's just like, well, why now? Why? <laughs> I, I don't I don't understand it. It's not to say that they never had plans to have Carla in the film, because maybe they did, and they just wanted to contact her last minute for whatever reason. But Ray and Julie, Freddie and Jennifer Love Hewitt, they were in talks the minute we found out about this film being in development. I just don't, I, I, I'm really just trying to wrap my mind around what they're about to do with the characters and why they are necessary for this. I just don't know. I, I keep going back to the fact that what I was saying about Mike Flanagan and his iteration might just end up being true. I feel like I'm going to look back on this movie and say to myself, we should have just got whatever Mike Flanagan was going to give us. Because this, his version was not going to be relying solely on, or not, not solely, because I don't want to say it's solely relying on it. But his version was not going to be relying on nostalgia. Uh, outside of anything, just being, but being titled, I know what you did last summer. It wasn't going to be really connected to Ben Willis in any capacity. It was its own thing, which seemed heavily inspired by Mickey Altieri in Scream 2 going off of that alleged that alleged ending that he had in store that was apparently a bit too dark that they wanted them to change it according to the reports that came out from bloody disgusting and other trades i just don't see how this is going to end up being a film 
that I'm going to sit down and say to myself, you know what? You were right to include those legacy characters. Julie, Ray, and Carla, they all needed to be back. It seems like what you really should do is just hone in on whatever it is you're about to cook up with these newbies. Let them stand on their own. Leave the legacy cast out of it. Something about the legacy stars right now going into this, I know what you did last summer movie, the more we learn about it, the more cast members, and the more I try to rationalize how they even should be fitting into a narrative like this, I cannot see it. It just doesn't make sense to me right now. It does keep me a bit excited to see how you're gonna incorporate them, but it also has me a bit concerned because until I know for a fact how little or, or how much screen time these stars have, because Freddy's supposed to be back as Ray, but why? Are some of these characters their children? What's going on? Friends of the family, how do they get intertwined with these people? We know that Ben Willis' story, again, allegedly, all rumored, is like an urban legend for the youth now. It's an urban legend in Southport. But what about what goes down requires them to go after julie ray and say hey we need your guys' help and what inspires these two people who went through a similar situation over two decades ago to get involved again if it's anything to do with exposing what they did to ben willis i can understand that but i'm even have my doubts that we're going to even do a narrative like that because the fact that it's a legend now says that something got out because they tried to keep it a secret but something got out to the point where it became a legend i don't know man i just I really am losing hope that the legacy stars are going to be used in any sort of crucial capacity or that they are even remotely necessary for this narrative. Um, I just will keep my fingers crossed and trust the process. And despite so many people maybe not wanting to accept this reality, the I Know What You Did Last Summer franchise has essentially been dead for over 20 years because no one really counts the actual third film we got. No one counts that really. So it's actually been a dead franchise since 1998. It's a sequel that wasn't really all that well received, didn't do that great at the box office. So if I'm thinking in the long term of things, how in reality would I even have an argument to say that, you know what, Freddie Prince Jr., Jennifer Love Hewitt, and Brandy, they are all necessary to revive this IP. No, they aren't. The IP has been dead. And it's not that profitable profitable to the point that it's this overly known IP. It's not it's not the MCU. Brandy is not saying she didn't know about this because she's trying to Andrew Garfield us. I think she was being quite genuine. They aren't necessary to come back. If they do manage to get them all back, of course, I would eat it up because I'm a fan of those first two movies. But to sit there and delude myself into thinking that the rest of the general public is so in love with this franchise, that's just not reality. They are not necessary to make this work. So if you force them into this in a capacity that is a disservice to them, that's going to not sit well with me. It's not going to sit well with many other people who grew up with those first two movies. But the rest of the general public who you, again, could have leaned on by just having a film completely dedicated to your newbies, they will eat it up. They won't mind the mistreatment. But hopefully I'm proven wrong. So you guys let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.